All right. Thank you for attending today, and welcome to the webinar on testing solutions to tackle application security. This webinar is presented today by Checkpoint Technologies. So we want to thank you for giving us some of your time today to talk a little bit about application security. Uh, just uh, kind of an informal agenda today. Um, we'll do some welcome introductions and some housekeeping on the actual webinar itself, how to ask questions, things like that. We're going to do a quick overview on Checkpoint Technologies. We're going to talk a little bit about why do we need application security for web apps? What's, what's important about that? How is that going to help our organization? We're going to have an overview and a discussion on HP Web Inspect so you can see how it can uh, help us with our application security testing. We're going to walk through and discuss some of the cool features of the tool, show you the uh, uh, tool itself, some information so you can see how easy it is to use. We will have a Q&A, so what we'll do is um, if you ask questions during the uh, presentation, we'll see if we can answer those during the presentation, and if not, uh, we'll take a few minutes at the end to answer some. Anything we don't get to, we'll, uh, we'll talk about how we're going to handle those as well. And then we'll do just a wrap up and, and finish up. All right, so as far as um, welcoming and introductions, again, I want to thank everybody for attending today. Uh, from Checkpoint Technologies, who is sponsoring this webinar, uh, we have myself, David Brewerman. So I'm the Director of Software Support. Uh, you can see my contact information there. And we also have Dean Carbon with us. He's our Solutions Architect Manager. So thanks, Dean, for uh, uh, helping me out as well. Um, so if you want to get a hold of us after the webinar, um, you could either give us a call or uh, go out to our website to contact us as well. Just a few housekeeping items. Uh, like I said, what we're going to try to do is we'll, we'll uh, answer questions. If, if you go ahead and send those, I'm going to mention how to do that here in a second. Uh, we'll answer them as we go if we have time, or at the end, we'll, we'll take some time to answer a few as well. Um, to actually ask a question, just go to the question area in your GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, you can type in the information there, click send, and then we will get those questions, and uh, we'll, we'll do the best we can to answer those. Um, anything that we were not able to answer or what we'll do is we'll put together not only the questions that were answered, but the ones that were not, and then we'll send all that uh, information out to all the attendees of the webinar, and we will also send out a link to the presentation. So, um, you know, if maybe you missed something or, or you want to share it maybe with some uh, folks in your organization, um, and then you want to see the questions and answers because uh, maybe you were thinking the same thing, uh, we'll go ahead and get that to you out as well. All right, so I just want to do a quick corporate overview of Checkpoint Technologies to sponsor this webinar. Uh, Checkpoint Technologies has been around since uh, January of 2003, and the company um, employs experts in quality assurance, security, and software testing. All right, so any type of needs around that um, uh, quality assurance space, uh, we can do that. We are a software a gold partner and authorized training partner for HP. And we also do the authorized software support. So if you need support on your HP tools, uh, we can do that for you as well. We have some partnerships with some mobile testing folks, so Perfecto Mobile and Mobile Labs. And we also have a partnership with the uh, Scriptless Automation Turnkey Solutions for uh, Scriptless Automation Functional Testing. And we are also a training partner of the Quality Assurance Institute, so that's one of our other partnerships. Um, so we do offer a, um, a number of different types of professional services if, if you are in need of those, such as staff augmentation, consulting. We also do um, outsourcing, training, and mentoring. So as far as staff augmentation, if you end up uh, having some projects or some long-term um, needs as far as um, consulting, we can do it both on-site and remote. And we do employ various levels of employees, so it could be QA leads, uh, maybe you need a manual tester for a project, you just have too much work to do. Maybe you need some automation or a framework built out, things like that. So we have experts in those areas as well. Um, from the consulting side, so we can look at your environment and do an assessment. Uh, we can install the HP uh, various software. We can do the configuration analysis, all of those uh, pieces as well. And we can do both long and short-term short consulting. So whether it's on-site or remote, uh, we can do that as well. As far as outsourcing, 
Uh, we do have US-based employees uh, for outsourcing for functional and even performance side of things. So if you need some performance and load testing, we can do that. Uh, we have a, an in-house test lab um, for, that can be staffed by our expert resources to help you out with that. As far as training and mentoring, we are an authorized training partner, as I mentioned. We can do the uh, HP materials, so if you're interested in a specific uh, software class, uh, we can do that either uh, on-site uh, at your location, we can do it at virtual training, or we have a public training facility here in Tampa, Florida, so if you're interested in uh, coming to Florida to visit for the weather, uh, we'd be happy to do that as well. And then we also offer cost-effective mentoring. So it's basically going to be training on your particular lo um, your location, your environment, with your data and information, and then you can take that information and uh, use that moving forward. All right. So let's now move on to the presentation. Let's uh, let's start talking about what we came here for, and that's to talk about security, uh, application security, and testing. All right. So the first thing is, why do we need application security for a web application? You know, what's the point of doing that? So, you know, if you haven't noticed, you know, more and more each day, you know, the entire planet seems to be going more online with um, cloud type of technology of storing information, um, conducting online trans transactions, whether it's banking or you know, you're going on, you know, some website to order some product, maybe you're doing some research, or maybe you're just doing social media. So you're doing Facebook, Twitter, things like that. So. Uh, as more and more users are online, that's going to give the bad guys more and more chances to uh, collect personal data and get customer information. So I'm sure most of you have heard of various uh, data breaches or things in the news, you know, all that bad publicity around um, a large retailer. So you notice I, I capitalized the word large. We won't necessarily say the name, but uh, recently or it's past holiday season, uh, there was a, a large retailer that um, you know, some data was breached and customer information was was put out where it shouldn't have been, and the CEO ended up resigning. And it's going to really cost, you know, from a forecast perspective, about a billion dollars to mitigate that. So, um, actually, I was one of the the people that was part of that. Um, you know, I had my information taken, so I, you know, I, I didn't even know what happened. I got a um, a new debit card from my bank that said, "Oh, by the way, your information was was grabbed as part of this data breach." So. Uh, personally, I experienced that, and it wasn't too much fun. So, um, so that's from the retail side of things. But even around healthcare and banking, different industries are, you know, feeling this. So, from healthcare, uh, you can see New York Presbyterian and Columbia Medical Center back in this past May, um, a huge HIPAA fine. So far, 4.8 million dollars because they lost their customer data and customer records. Um, so again, it's costing a lot of money to these organizations for losing that data. And even around like banking and casinos, so First American Bank, Sands Corporation. So, you know, if you're out there gambling, you're not going to want you know hackers and people getting your personal information, your financial records. So, um, again, security is important for web applications. So, really, the bottom line of what we're trying to say here is that no industry or organization is really safe. You know, if you end up losing your data, you lose your customers' information, um, you're going to lose your your company's livelihood. You're going to possibly um, have a bad reputation for your organizations and customers don't want to do business with you. Right. So I want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, how do, how do we handle this? How, you know, what, are, what types of tools and websites and things do we have as security people or professionals in the industry to help combat some of these hackers? So the first thing I want to talk about is OWASP or um, Open Web Application Security Project. So basically this is an organization uh, nonprofit organization that really is focused on uh, providing visibility on software security, helping individuals and companies just make decisions about security, providing information and input about you know what's going on in the industry. So uh, the OWASP.org that's a good place to learn about security and, and really the the top ten application security risks they put out every few years of you know, what are, what are the biggest players out there? And right now, the top 10 items that we're going to walk through so you can see, you know, what's actually going on out there, um, these top 10 items are sorted by uh, prevalence data. So how often are these um, items coming up? What type of estimates? Um, 
combination of estimates of exploitability, detectability, and impact estimates. So, you know, what they do is they work with huge uh, company security organizations. They work with, uh, you know, super smart security professionals throughout the industry, and they come up with lists of issues and things that are going on. So I'm going to walk through the uh, top 10 issues that um, are actually out there right now. And then we're going to talk a little bit about how uh, what's called HP Web Inspect can help us find these vulnerabilities and fix them. All right, so the first one is um, the number one OWASP or the top 10 security issues is called injection. And basically what an injection is, it could be like a SQL injection, it could be an operating system, an LDAP, some sort of um, sign-on where um, basically untrusted data ends up getting sent to some sort of interpreter and, it, and it's maybe just part of a command or some kind of query. And then what happens is the attacker or the bad guy's hostile data basically tricks that interpreter into, you know, executing or, or, or doing something <laughs> on a command level and then being able to access that data without proper authentication. <laughs> so basically what ends up happening is, you know, that interpreter does some command and then you know, the bad guy's able to get into places where they're not supposed to without authorization. So that's the number one um, application security risk right now. Number two is broken authentication and session management. So really what this is, is application functions that are related to some sort of authentication or session management are not always implemented, implemented correctly. So basically what happens is it allows attackers to compromise things like passwords, uh, various keys or session tokens, things like that, and then basically be able to exploit that to assume another user's identity. So what happens is you might think that, um, you know, they're in as, you know, somebody that's allowed to be in there, but they're really not. They're assuming some other sort of identity. Right. Number three is cross-site scripting or XSS. And cross-site scripting basically happens when, for example, an application will take um, untrusted data and then it basically sends it to a web browser without some sort of proper validation or uh, authentication. All right, so that cross-site scripting really allows attackers to just go ahead and execute a script in your browser, you know, and hijack a user session. So you may have been in a browser before and it hijacks your session, it takes you somewhere else, it, you might get onto a website or you've seen like the FBI maybe had a, web, you know, on their website they had somebody drawing some pictures or writing some things on their website. That's basically defacing a website. So that's, that can be done using cross-site scripting. Number four is insecure direct object references. And that is when a developer exposes a reference to an internal object. It could just be a file, it could be a database key, it could be some kind of directory. And then really what happens is those attackers can manipulate those references and get access to unauthorized data. So, you know, you don't really want them in there, but what happens is uh, that attack, the attacker grabs that object or that file, and then they're able to manipulate the data inside of there and grab what they need. So, again, not, not necessarily a good thing. All right, number five, security misconfiguration. So, you know, if you think about security and good security, you should have some sort of secure configuration defined and deployed for your application or your framework, your web, your database server, whatever the entire platform is. All right, so you should have secure settings. They should be defined, implemented, and maintained. However, you know, sometimes they're not. So if something's insecure or someone's, you know, some software patch, anything's not kept up to date, there could be a misconfiguration, and then again, you know, the bad guys are getting what they're not supposed to have access to. All right, number six on the list, sensitive data exposure. All right, so a lot of web applications don't really protect the sensitive data. So you might be thinking, oh, we're protecting our credit cards, our social security number, our tax IDs, our authentication credentials, but a lot of times that's not the case. So what attackers are looking for is they're looking to steal or modify, you know, weakly protect, protected data because they want to grab those credit card numbers. They want to grab the uh, identity of, of your customers and then commit crimes with them. So when you're looking at sensitive customer type of data, you want to, um, you know, set up, make sure you have extra protection around that data. So it's different types of encryption. So whether it's, you know, on your site or it's actually in transit over the web. 
you definitely want to make sure that you are protecting that sensitive data. From a missing function level access control perspective, um, you know, most web applications will verify that function access level before the functionality is actually visible in the user interface. But sometimes those apps really need to perform that same control check on the server as well. So if those requests are not verified, you know, the attackers, the bad guys are going to be able to, you know, forge out requests and be able to actually get into the functionality without the proper authentication. So, you know, again, they're in there, they don't have the right authentication, but they're grabbing information or being able to do requests that they're not supposed to be doing. So, again, another, another way for the hackers to get inside of your uh, application. Number eight, cross-site request forgery. You might have heard this called CSERF before. And basically what this is, it forces a logged on victim's browser to send out a forged HTTP request. So that cookie for that session, any type of the authentication information is automatically sent out. And then that particular user, or that particular bad guy, can then get to that web application, get to that data, all right? And what this will do is the attacker is then able to force the victim's browser to do things, you know, generate requests, you know, and then the, the system might think that it's a legitimate request when it's really not. It's, you know, the bad guy's been taking that over. So uh, that happens quite a bit um, in um, software applications. All right, and then the last two, using components with known vulnerabilities. So you may have specific components such as libraries, frameworks, other types of software or modules. Um, you know, many times they run with full privileges. They have some sort of admin rights or some sort of full privileges that they can write data and things like that. So if a vulnerable component ends up being taken over or exploited, you know, that can actually have very serious data loss or, or takeover of your servers and things like that. Um, so any applications that are used with components and known vulnerabilities can really, really just undermine the entire defense of perimeter defense and, um, you know, network defenses and things like that and cause a lot of issues. So again, we need to make sure that the various components and libraries are up to date and, um, you know, secure. And then finally, number 10 on the OWASP top 10 is unvalidated re redirects and forwards. And what this is is, uh, redirecting or forwarding a user to other pages and websites. So, you know, you might think it's a, a legitimate uh, web page or a website, but what they're doing is they're sending you to a web page or website that maybe looks exactly like your bank or PayPal or something like that, but they're really sending you to, you know, from phishing or malware sites and things like that where, you know, they want to get your information or your company's or their customer's information. So. Again, these are just um, the top 10 application security risks for uh, 2013 that's been put out. Uh, these are the things to definitely keep in mind, but there's obviously a lot of other ones as well. But we just wanted to walk through so you can see what, you know, some of those are um, during this discussion. All right. So as far as, you know, how do we mitigate, what do we do to try to prevent against these uh, security risks? How do we make our, you know, application software more secure? And, Really what you want to do is you, have, you need to put in application security testing. And so doing that, what you want to do is really follow the leader. So HP, uh, with their Fortify stack, and we're going to talk about uh, WebInspect today, is, is really the, the leader in both uh, the ability to execute um, application security testing and the completeness of the overall security vision. So basically what Gartner did is they said, all right, let's look at all the players in the industry, and then in the magic quadrant and the leaders is going to be HP. And the reason why is because, you know, the Fortify stack has been around for, for quite a number of years uh, with Spy Dynamics and now with HP. And really around, um, you know, the, the best players in the market, uh, they have the best and highest innovation and they score HP the highest in the, in the overall completeness of that vision. So you definitely want to uh, follow the leader by, by getting on board with this. All right, so you might be thinking, you know, how, how am I going to integrate this into my development life cycle or, you know, what is this actually going to look like? So uh, what I'm showing you here is uh, the Software Security Assurance, SSA, and, you know, how to put that into your uh, software development life cycle or whatever you actually end up calling it your organization. 
And you can see at the top there that security really is built in pretty much from you know, the beginning of your life cycle uh, to the end. Right? So down at the bottom you're going to see not only the um, more of the development side and as you go sort of the testing and moving forward, but you know, there's a couple different products in the Fortify stack. So uh, we're not going to talk about the Fortify static suite and the development side. But you can also use Fortify to do some static testing on your code and things like that. Uh, what we're kind of talking about today is more the testing uh, side of things using uh, HP Web Inspect. And that's going to really do dynamic testing. So it's going to go out and actually um, crawl and audit and look through your website and your applications. And it's going to come back and give you information about what it finds. So it's going to do dynamic testing. And it's going to also even help. Uh, tell you what's wrong and how to fix things. So this is this pretty nifty tool um, and you don't really need a lot of security experience at all. I mean you can bring this on board and actually uh, get it up and running very quickly. All right, so let's talk a little bit about web inspect in general. So we see our bad guy, he's uh, running out the door because the alarm's going off. So that's that's how web inspect's going to help us keep the bad guy out from um, application security. So some of the key features of WebInspect, and then we'll take a look at Web, what WebInspect looks like, um, is to really be able to engage in security testing uh, on those web apps like we just saw in that life cycle from you know, development all the way through production. So what's nice about this tool is it's, it's very automated, meaning as new vulnerabilities come out and changes are made, it can be automatically updated. It's very configurable. You can use it either out of the box or you can customize it to your various needs for your organization. Right? And it's going to do um, web application security and penetration, penetration testing. That's easy for me to say. And it's really going to mimic what the bad guys are doing. So what are those real world techniques and hacking uh, that the bad guys are actually doing? It's going to be doing the same thing and that way you're going to know that when they try that same thing, you know, nothing's going to happen. So. Um, you can also easily manage, view, and share security test results in history. So as you run these scans, as you build them out, um, once you see what they are, right, you're going to have the information right there and it's going to help you figure out how do we fix this before moving to production. So it goes back to the old saying where the earlier in the development process you find your vulnerabilities and your issues, the cheaper they are to fix, right, same thing here with security. Find that earlier in the process, get it fixed before it goes out the door or before the bad guy actually gets in and then uh, you know we see your company on the news. This allows you to security test uh, various web APIs and web services that your company uh, uses and that supports your business. So it, you know it's up to date with all the latest um, APIs and web services and things like that. So um, it's definitely helpful from that perspective. Once you actually do the scans, get it on board, have the information available and communicate it out, you know, it's going to help promote just security and the knowledge across your entire organization. So like I said, you don't even have to have people that really, really know security at all. Uh, this is self-contained. You can put it on board, bring it on board. It's going to help you figure out what's wrong, how to fix things. And then you're going to be able to communicate those results to people in your organization through various reports. Um, let them know how you're doing with uh, your development and things like that. So um, it gives you, you know, results that you can actually use. And here's a big one here. Demonstrate compliance with various regulatory agencies. So if you're, you're on board with a company that has various uh, regulations around, you know, financial and healthcare and things like that around PCI, you know, the SOX, ISO or HIPAA, things like that. Um, there's various compliance reports and things that you're going to be able to show if an auditor or somebody comes in and says, you know, show me your security, show me what you guys are doing to make sure the customer data is protected. You're going to be able to demonstrate that compliance and not, you know, have them breathe it on your neck if something's going on. So you're going to be able to uh, very easily show that to the uh, regulators. So overall, what WebInspect will do for your company from an application security perspective is to empower your organization and really helps protect your company, your customer data, all the information uh, from your most vulnerable entry points uh, from the bad guys attacking you. So uh, definitely it's, it's not a question of, of uh, if, it's going to be a question of when because hackers are always out there looking for uh, customer data and information. The, lead, um, you know, the, the easiest place to grab it, if you don't have security and somebody else does, they're going to be coming after you. 
All right, so what I'd like to do now is turn it over to um, Dean uh, to be able to talk a little bit about the functionality on the uh, Web Inspect tool. All right, David, thank you. So um, can you hear me okay? Yep. Can you hear me? Okay, good. I just want to make sure I was off mute. So, well, thank you. Um, appreciate that, David. So, um, as we see, that's a great background to why we need security testing in our organizations. What the bad guys are, are looking at to infiltrate our websites, our applications to capture that data, because it's all about the data. And we looked at some of the key features of Web Inspect as well. So, looking at the screen, um, this is the main screen of Web Inspect. So let's take a few minutes and look at the tool itself and see how it will um, guide us uh, through creating scans um, for our web sites so that we can actually um, secure them down. <laughs> Excuse me. And David, I'm not able to click if you don't mind. Oh, there we go. Got to click. Sorry about that. There we go. So starting a guided scan, um, this is very simply uh, a way that Web Inspect prompts you for a little bit of information about your website, and then will decide the best features to include in a scan, and it will be tailored for your application as well. And this can actually include um, a scanning for mobile devices as well. So you can configure a scan to capture traffic from an iOS or Android device, whether it's actually a physical device or an emulator, so it doesn't matter. So built within Web Inspect, you can get right off the ground with testing your your um, web apps or your um, mobile app security. So starting a basic scan, we'll look at this in more detail in just a bit, but this actually walks you through essentially a wizard that guides you through a process of selecting the different features that you want uh, to include in your scan, the different policies, and we'll talk about what a policy is as well. Um, different policies you want, um, how breadth, the breadth and depth of the scan that you want to uh, begin on your website um, and also includes uh, for mobile devices as well. All right, so web service scans is is essentially it's, it's delaying. There we go. It delays my click pretty much. So the web services scan, uh, we, we do a lot of web service testing as far as functionally like our web services are, are behaving properly, but many organizations miss the security side of web services. So there's a built-in policy for testing web services. And this walks you through a, a WSDL file that you provide, and it submits values for each parameter in each operation, looking for those um, vulnerabilities that are associated with web services. An enterprise scan is, is really just that. It's, it's, it's very, very in-depth, very broad, very, very deep as far as its scan, as far as having it infiltrating into your website and your application. Uh, this is something that um, you know, takes a while to do because it's so broad in its scope, um, but it gives you very, very good coverage and will give you a great idea of, of the security of your application. So we're going to also look later on at creating a report. Um, so you know, David mentioned some compliance agencies, so you can create reports that satisfy those compliance agencies for whatever <clears throat> regulations that you're, you're, held, uh, you're held to. Also, Smart Update is a feature in Web Inspect that every every couple days at least, HP comes comes out with uh, updates for the policies, creates new policies, whatever you see. If you see some new um, virus or whatever in the news, it's going to be a matter of a day or so. HP will have a policy and and some scans to to protect your organization against those new. Um, new infiltrations. So here's some policies. So a policy manager helps you just do that, manage policies. So we see here some examples. These, these are all the built-in policies that you have access to with Web Inspect. So again, there's mobile policies that are designed specific for mobile testing. Um, we're all familiar with the Heartbleed um, issue that came out some months ago. Very, very quickly, within a couple days, HP had a policy that was pushed out to all those organizations that have Web Inspect so that they can cover themselves against the heart bleed uh, issue. And David spent some time talking about the OWASP security risks. Um, risks. So there's a built in policy that covers all 10 of those highest risks that were evaluated over the past couple years that companies have issues with. 
simply by selecting that policy, it'll test your application for all those criteria. So you're, you're not relegated to just these policies. You can create your own custom policies that, that are unique for your environment and for your corporation, for your uh, specific um, applications as well. Or you can modify these existing ones to, to be specific for your needs. And then you just save it as a new one and you have a custom policy just for your organization. So Web Inspect Compliance Manager, so we talked about reporting and compliance with um, regulatory agencies. This helps you design reports that fit those needs. So if you get audited by, by a government agency um, for HIPAA or SOX, whatever it happens to be, you can actually design reports that satisfy those needs. So running your scan, it collects all that data, and those reports are built based on the information you provide here. So out of the box, it'll give you know, just about everything, probably a little too much information, but you can pare that down to what your organization needs uh, for reporting in those areas. All right. So let's talk about the scan wizard. So this is starting a basic scan. So this is how simple it can be to get started with Web Inspect. You can bring it into your office, get it installed, and start designing a web scan that's, that's specific for your application. All right, and it's simply a wizard. So you would just give it a, um, a URL that reflects your application. A uh, couple radio buttons. We're not going to get into detail what, what's the difference between a crawl and an audit, but you select what you want there, and continue to the next page. Give it a proxy. Uh, you will likely have to provide some network authentication. So um, on the server side, you, you need um, uh, a username and password so that um, Web Inspect can have access to all the areas of your application for testing. Coverage and thoroughness. So down the bottom there, there's what's called an audit depth. And again, these are some of those policies. So you would, you would select a policy you want to include in this particular scan. It's as simple as that. Not a lot of, you don't have, you don't need technical information and knowledge on security vulnerabilities, on security testing. The tool is built to allow anybody out of the box to create these scans. So this is a really cool feature <clears throat> that, Web that HP included in Web Inspect. And <clears throat> to crawl through web pages, it requires data many times, or more often than not, to actually navigate from one page to another. There's a built-in tool that allows you to do that. So it will actually capture those parameters associated with any given page in your application and you provide the data for it. So you can, you can create multiple sets of data files to walk through your tool based on whatever policy you want to check, um, whatever scans you want to provide. So you can actually save these and just include those into any given scan. And there's a simple way to create those as well. All right. <clears throat> so that's really all it takes. There's four simple steps, and step five gives you a congratulations. You are now a security expert in testing. So now let me give you a word to the wise. So the next thing you would do is press scan. And what this does is actually initiate a scan against your application for the given the information you just provided. So learning from experience, you don't want to do this without notifying those individuals who would receive emails. Um, in the case of <clears throat> infiltration into your website. Um, I made that mistake early on and um, all kinds of fires got lit. So that was, it was kind of fun um, if you kind of have a sixth sense of humor, but um, <laughs> you want to be careful with that. So notify those individuals who um, are on the security side that you're going to test this because Web Inspect does not play nice with your application. It's not a GUI testing tool. It's not a web services testing tool as far as features go. It's going to beat the mess out of your application. It wants, it's going to act like a bad guy trying to find those vulnerabilities, trying to find a way into your data in every way it can. So uh, just a word to the wise, again, um, don't press scan without everybody knowing you're going to press scan. So when you do press scan, this is an active scan. So as you go through the scan, it actually gives you live updates. 
So there's a dashboard that shows you how many crawls it's going through, how many audits have been initiated against the application. <clears throat> there's live scan statistics, so every little piece of detail, how many total requests, how many 404 probes, um, how many hosts that has been touching different sessions. On the left-hand side, you see excluded and allowed hosts. So when you get web inspect, it actually um, limits you to an IP address. So no one has access to other organizations' websites. Um, so there's, that's not an issue. So everything's, everything's narrowed down to those IP addresses that are related to your websites. But you can include and exclude hosts from, the, from within those IP addresses as well. So there's a detailed attack table. So as you see that graph there, we've found so far five critical issues, 11 high, uh, a whole bunch of low issues, and also just some best practices. So WebInspect doesn't just look for those vulnerabilities. It looks for ways to make your application better, okay? Make it stronger, make sure you're, you're complying with best practices. And then there's a, uh, down in the, in the below table there, the detailed attack table gives you every bit of information necessary and the vulnerabilities found in the application at the bottom gives you <clears throat> every bit of information that's been uh, retrieved from your application. And we'll look in just a bit on how to create a report uh, with this information from, from WebInspect. Right, so let's do that now. So, Generating reports, I mean, this is really, really valuable, and it's a very, very robust feature in WebInspect. So we can create scans all we want, but unless we can extract the data we need from those scans and report out um, to, to whoever needs to, to whether, whether it's um, you know, high-level managers or developers or um, network individuals, we need to be able to create a report that's relevant for them, all right? And there's a whole bunch of standard reports here, and we can you can select those and select how you know all the different uh, tax statuses, all the different filters you need um, to create a report. And again, we looked previously at the compliance manager. This is where that comes in handy because it, it helps you design these reports uh, to be just what your organization needs for that type of scan. So you see here, there's a tax status that we selected: compliance and vulnerability. So. The vulnerability we'll see in a minute is very, very detailed, okay? Uh, the compliance is related to those compliance issues that we selected, and if, if we selected them, pared them down, maybe just filtered them out to just the certain ones that we wanted. Um, and the executive summary, which I, we don't have selected here, but the executive summary is just a number of graphs, okay? Executives like to see graphs, you pare it down to visual, and uh, so the executive summary will give us graphs and tables and things like that to show management as well. So here we see those three reports generated. On the down, on the left-hand side are the OWASP um, 10, top 10 issues. You see those broken down. We can see like the A1 injections, 516 passed, and there's a number that failed, but it's covered by the other one. So we see down in the cross-site request forgery. One uh, it found a failure point, and it found two passed points there as well. So the information you see here can be provided to <clears throat> at any level in your organization um, that needs whatever level of detail they need, anything from executive report to the vulnerability report. And what also, it doesn't tell you just what's wrong, it will give you suggestions on how to fix the issue. And that's key as well because you don't, you know, a lot of people in your organization may, may not be aware or familiar with the best security practices. So WebInspect will also educate you on how to fix many of these vulnerabilities that are found during the scan. All right, so I'm going to turn it back to David, and he's going to talk about um, the application lifecycle management and how WebInspect integrates uh, with ALM. So you there, David? I am. Thank you, Dean. Uh, just kind of before we do that, would you um, mind taking one of the questions that we uh, got from the attendees? Oh, sure, go ahead. Um, so somebody asked, if I want to just scan a certain process in our application using specific data, is that something I can do with WebInspect, or do I have to just use what's out of the box? Uh, no, so so there's a number of features in, so just keep in mind, we touched like, like, like the tip of the iceberg with the features of WebInspect. So there's a couple of interesting points with that. One of them is, the, I think I may briefly mention the web macro recorder. So 
what this it'll allow you to do two things. One is create a login macro, and what this login macro will do, it establishes the connection, <clears throat> essentially logs into the application. And during the scan, each uh, web inspect will actually recognize whether or not it is currently logged into the application. So it has access to this macro that it can run over and over again as many times as it, ha as it has to to log back into the application. And when it does that, it picks up the scan right from where it stops. It doesn't have to start the scan over again. It, picks it, it just continues it from where it stopped. The other type of macro is a workflow macro. And this is just <clears throat> if you, when you configure a, a guided or basic scan, you can create a macro during that time or pretty much any time. It's just a menu at the top that you can select to create a, a macro. So you can specify a previously recorded macro or create a new one if you'd like to. And so you create one, you save it off, you can call it in any time you need to. So during a scan that's being um, being used from a workflow macro that you've created, uh, WebInspect will only focus on those URLs that are recorded in the workflow macro. So it won't go out and just touch all kinds of places. So it's a very narrow scan. It's very it's, it's much faster, of course. And uh, you may have maybe a new feature in your application that you just want to touch, test that area for security vulnerabilities. So that's a great idea, uh, a great way to do that using a workflow macro. So great question. Thank you for that. All right, great. Thanks, Dean. Uh, just one more before we uh, move on to the uh, ALM piece and the integration with WebInspect. If someone asked an interesting question here because we talked about the life cycle and how to integrate security and things like that, and somebody asked, you know, won't having this application security software slow down our processes? We can't afford to add, you know, more overhead or slow down development by adding another layer on top of processes we already have. And, that, and that's a really an interesting point and question because you know, and, and many times you might think it's really going to slow you down because it's like, all right, we just got to, you know, now we got to run the scan, we got to figure out what to do. But if you think about it, what ends up happening is it's going to save you time. And how it's going to do that is, number one, you're going to find those software vulnerabilities or issues, right, before it, it gets out of production or before the bad guys do. So we're not only going to find those earlier in the life cycle, but Again, that's going to save money on you know the development time, doing it sooner rather than later. Um, that's also going to save money. So you know studies have shown that anywhere between you know 14 and 28 times cheaper uh, to do it earlier in the life cycle rather than later. And so that's really going to save not only that time and that money, but also you know the ability to you know keep your customer data or that sensitive data and not you know, have a bad company reputation or, you know, see the company on the news. So it might seem like it's adding some more processes, but again, you know, as Dean mentioned, you can get it up and running very simply. It's going to even tell you, you know, here's the vulnerability, here's what to do, here's how to fix it, and then finding that earlier in the life cycle rather than later is, is going to save time and money in the long run. So, all right, so let's move on to um, how this would integrate with um, something that you may be familiar with. If not, I'm going to just explain it a little bit so we're all on the same page. But uh, WebInspect will integrate with um, HP's ALM solution, Application Lifecycle Management. Or you may uh, be familiar with it with previous versions, uh, if you've known it as Quality Center, or maybe back in the old Mercury days it was called Test Director. But um, basically what um, ALM is, it's a repository for all your uh, application items, so software testing, uh, defect management requirements, test execution, things like that. And this tool is going to allow you to um, not only do all that testing and run reports and things like that, but it's also going to allow you to integrate WebInspect and do that application security testing. So as part of your uh, normal life cycle, as you're doing that, you know, regular functional or performance or automated testing, you're going to be able to also do application security testing. So um, you know, you can see here on the slide where it talks about, um, you know, managing your releases and cycles and, um, you know, project planning and tracking and things like that. But not only does it do that, but it also lets you integrate with other HP tools. So you may already have, you know, the functional testing, you know, UFT or Quick Test Professional. You might already have Load Runner or Performance Center for your, your, your load and performance side of things. So again, WebInspect easily integrates. I'm going to show you here in a second on uh, what that actually looks like. So ALM has changed really over the last few years and really the direction HP is going is it's all about collaboration. So you're working with various team members or, or people in different business units in your organization and you're trying to get everybody on the same page with 
you know, quality assurance, testing, you know, you're trying to, you know, get things out the door to your customers, but you want to make sure that everybody knows what's going on. You're going to be able to send that out with uh, high quality. Um, and some of the things they've actually added, which is, is really cool, is, you know, now you can do some additional things around um, uh, sharing assets and, and items between projects. Um, you're going to be able to standardize your um, projects if you need to uh, using templates and things like that. Um, the reporting and um, sharing of information is much easier now uh, with not only what they call business views, um, but um, you're just going to be able to much more easily get data out of, of ALM now. And so one of the, these items that, that fits right into the ALM process, process and right into your development lifecycle is Web Inspect for your application security testing. Right, what are some benefits of actually putting these two tools together? So you might be thinking, well, I, you know, maybe I do have ALM already, maybe I don't, and I'm thinking about maybe getting Web Inspect, or should I just have it, you know, Web Inspect by itself? But here's just a couple of benefits of, you know, putting these two tools together. So again, it has native integration right out of the box. So you're able to plug Web Inspect and ALM together, and then you're going to be able to do that security testing. You're going to be able to put that right into your life cycle. And it's going to be very easy to run those tests, uh, use Web Inspect to tell you about the vulnerabilities, tell you how to fix it, and then be able to write defects and manage that process if you need to. So again, everybody's on the same page. There's collaboration with people in your organization on, you know, what are we doing, how are we doing it, and where are we actually at. Right, run and kick off those security tests directly inside of ALM. So as you're doing your other functional performance side of things, run those security tests. Look at those reports. You know, generate the information out to your, your management team, your project team, right inside of your um, ALM project. So it's nothing special you have to do. There's just a little bit of setup time. But again, you're able to uh, have everybody be on the same page. Defects are very uh, easily done. So again, you run that scan. There's an issue or a vulnerability. Uh, you can write up a defect, pop it right inside the ALM, and then use um, either the out-of-the-box workflow or you can build custom workflow for your organization to manage the defect, you know, make sure it gets to the right developers for fixing it, you know, retesting it just like you would a normal defect in your development lifecycle, and then uh, fix it and move it to production. All right, so this is just showing a, a quick snapshot of the ALM and the Web Inspect integration. And basically what it's showing you here is back on the home page, there's the ability under the connections area, kind of in the middle there, for HP Quality Center. So what it allows you to do is basically um, name a profile or to be able to connect into your uh, Quality Center ALM instance. And basically it's very simple. It's just by putting the, the instance or the, the URL of how you always log into ALM Quality Center. You're going to authenticate in with your username and password. You're going to select you know, what domain and project you want to do your security testing in. And then kind of in the middle section there, there is a little bit of configuration and setup around you know, how are you going to handle defects. You know, what types of reporting are you going to do? So when you find a defect that's on a specific priority, maybe it's an urgent defect or high priority, you know, I automatically want to map that, you know, critical risk or that critical defect, you know, right to a, a report so I can generate that out. Um, and then if I have um, specific fields that I want to map over from Web Inspect and I want to have those show up in uh, Quality Center ALM, I can do that as well. So it's not real difficult to get them to talk to each other. But like I said, the nice, the nice thing is, is as you do your scans on your application uh, software on your web pages, you have defects or issues, you can use Quality Center as that repository to make sure it, um, you, you kind of put together the entire uh, software development lifecycle. All right, so that's the, uh, uh, the main information we wanted to provide today. But we did want to take a few minutes for um, some questions that we've been receiving. I know we had a couple questions earlier that we um, discussed, but uh, we have a couple more that we want to uh, try to finish up with. Um, so again, thanks for attending today. So one of the questions that we got in um, f from the attendees is, you know, what are the main reasons that software applications are being attacked? You know, why are they being attacked? What are, what are some of those reasons? So, you know, that's a really good question. and. Um, it's all about money, right? It always seems to be all about money, all about customer data, what can the bad guys do with that? But, you know, really kind of just historically what happens is, you know, companies have spent a lot of money on protecting tangible assets, meaning, you know, the actual network, the actual servers, and they're using, you know, firewalls and intrusions and things like that to try to keep 
the bad guys out. Well, unfortunately, that's really not the state of the world anymore with, with uh, security, right? As we talked about, you know, more people are going online, doing more transactions, going to web pages for all the different things that they're doing. And really, the, the, the thought process has really changed. Because, you know, over the long haul, companies always thought if you just protected the perimeter, you didn't let the bad guys in, that the software, your applications, all that stuff was all good. And that's not just not the case anymore. All right, software is the new entry point or where hackers are really concentrating on because, you know, if the perimeter is good, they're going to say, all right, I'm not even going to mess with that anymore. I'm going to try this other area, all right? So just some uh, statistics here. Um, did you know that about 75 to 80 percent of all security breaches today are because of you know poor application security and just they're getting in in the application layer? And why are they doing that? Well, number one, it's just much easier to exploit than that perimeter. If everybody's been spending money on perimeter and firewalls and stuff like that, again, it's just going to be what's the easiest way to get in, and that's through the application layer. And then, of course, the, the money uh, aspect of it. Personal data information, that's a gold mine for hackers, right? So they go in through the application layer, they get that personal data, it's very profitable. You know, you see websites or hear about websites where they're selling, you know, your customer data out there for uh, people to use credit cards and buy things online. So that's really the main reason why software applications are being attacked because it's less about perimeter and things that have been, you know, traditionally the money was spent on versus you know, now people are starting to realize, oh, that's the place I can get in and, and actually get something out of it. All right. Um, we have a question about um, why should we bring on WebInspect? So the question is, my company is interested in application security and bringing on an industry-leading tool. You know, why should my organization choose HP WebInspect over the other tools? And that's a great question because there are a lot of different types of tools out there. So besides, you know, we talked about the Gartner and the Magic Quadrant and HP being at the top of that, um, you know, industry, industry has shown that, you know, HP is a leader just in uh, application security testing. So there's plenty of companies, thousands of companies um, out in the real world that are using uh, the Fortify the stack of software and also, you know, WebInspect, for example. And some of the, uh, you know, the major industries and things like that is uh, nine of the top ten major banks um, use the, the software. Ten of the top uh, 11 ISVs are independent software vendors, so those are like Microsoft, Oracle, SAP, things like that. All the major branches of the Department of Defense, all the top 10 telecom, all the top five financial, and all the top five insurance firms. So all of these huge companies and organizations in the real world are actually using um, the HP Fortify and Web uh, Inspect stack to uh, work with application security. All right, um, and then kind of I think the last one here, the, we just want to make sure we were able to finish up with this is, um, you know, why should my company actually spend money on this type of software? You know, I mean, we've been talking about the software and, you know, putting it on board and things like that, but, you know, nothing's happened so far with how they're doing things. You know, why should we actually spend any money? Everything's status quo. Why should we do that? So really, you know, you, you can say it's not, not a matter of, you know, if something's going to happen at your organization. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's just when is it going to actually happen. So it's kind of a numbers game, right? So, um, you know, hackers are always looking for uh, company data. They're looking for sensitive company or, or, you know, trade secrets. They're looking for customer information, credit cards, social security numbers, things like that. They're going to just take the path of least resistance. Right, they're going to look at your organizations versus another one. You know, what type of security or application security do they have? What kind of you know ways can I get in the door? They're going to be looking at you versus other places, and the path of least resistance they're going to take. You know, it's like the you know why rob a bank when you can go to the ATM that's sitting in the middle of the field that nobody's around? It's going to be much easier to hit that than it is to actually go into a bank and be successful. So again, it's the same principle. They're going to be looking for the path of least resistance. So you just have to think of what's, what's the ongoing risk to my organization, and you really want to be proactive instead of reactive. Don't wait for something to actually happen. Don't wait for a breach to occur. You know, you see your company's name on the news or read about it in the papers. You know, it harms your company's reputation, your reputation. And again, you might have regulators or people, you know, breathing down your neck saying, hey, what's going on here? So again, be proactive and not reactive when it comes to application security. And you can do that through HP Web Inspect. 
All right. Um, looks like we just have a couple of minutes here at the end. Um, so again, I want to thank everyone today for attending our webinar on testing solutions to tap, tackle application security. I want to thank Dean Carvin from Checkpoint Technologies for uh, helping us out and showing us WebInspect. Um, we do have a few uh, additional questions, and like I said, what we'll do is we're going to take the ones that we answered along with the questions that we did not answer today. We will get those answered and out to everybody that was on the call. We will also um, have the uh, presentation, a link sent out to everybody so that you can uh, check it out again or forward it on to colleagues that weren't able to make it today. And uh, again, thanks to Checkpoint Technologies for sponsoring our webinar. And uh, thanks, everybody, and have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.